Hey friend, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now you loved my last video where I shared a bunch of new card making supplies and tools and my thoughts on them so you can decide if you want them in your craft room. So today I've rounded up even more card making tools that we're going to go through and test and craft with to see if I like them. I'll have links down below to everything I talk about in today's video and remember using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's jump into it. This first tool from We Are Makers I thought was super cool. I saw a preview online of this stamping tool and I needed to share it with you. So this is the Rotating Precision Press, which is a stamping platform that is really focused on building wreaths and doing those circular designs. They sent me this early to try and test it out and I believe it comes in at around the $50 price point, which is pretty reasonable for a tool like this. All right, so inside of the box comes a nice instruction pamphlet and the tool itself. Okay, so let's go over the pieces of this tool. It has this sort of plastic press plate on top that has the different degree angles on it so you can line different stamps up really easily on the stamping platform. And this has two holes at the top and then these two kind of springy pieces at the bottom. So it really easily lines up with those top pieces and then those springs allow you to press it down to actually do the stamping, which is nice. So when you press it into here, it doesn't stamp until you press down. Now when we lift this off on the inside here, you're gonna see all of these different inch measurements. And this is how big you can cut your cardstock. So you can do four inches, five inches, six, and all the way up to 12, which is really nice for scrapbookers because many tools like this don't fit a large scrapbooking page. So it's cool that you can do that if you want to build a bigger wreath on a nice scrapbooking page. So I think that in itself is pretty cool. And then down here you have this magnetic piece that you pull off and those are super strong magnets, which is great because those hold your cardstock in place as you do that sort of rotating pattern. And this is a really innovative way to do this. Okay, so start off at the zero pointing up top here, and then I'm going to lift this off at the bottom. And I'm gonna start off with a piece of cardstock that is five by five inches. This is my Sam and Hurley Create Stark White cardstock, which is really nice and thick and great for stamping. So I'm going to place it in the corner like this, lining it up right in that five inch mark, and then you're going to take your magnet and easily magnets down at the bottom there. So check that out it magnets down to hold the cardstock nicely in place. Now to do my stamping today, I'm gonna to use the stamp set from Altenew called the Botanical Wreath Builder. I love this set because it's got both lined and solid images if you wanna color or do solid stamping. And these are a great size image to do this sort of wreath building technique. So this is a great set. All right, so I'm gonna start off with one of these solid flowers first, and I'm going to place it right here on my stamping tool. Then I'll go in with the press plate, line it up, up top, and then to pick it up, I'll just press it down. To ink this up, I'm gonna use a little bit of rosy cheeks and I just recommend inking it off to the side like this. And then we'll flip this over, line it up and press it down. Now, if I wanna get a little bit of a better impression, I can go in and double stamp this and let's see how it does if you stamp it twice, if it lines up in the exact same spot. So I'll press this down. And yeah, that lined up pretty great right in the exact same spot. All right, now for the rotating part. I'm going to rotate this quite a few times so that it goes right back into this angle here. But I love that it has these marked with different colors and also the different measurements here so that it's really easy to tell where you're rotating it and how many times to rotate. And I also like that it has so many stops in the rotation too so that you're able to really stamp a lot of images in here as you're wreath building. So again, I'll ink up that stamp, easily line it up and press it down. Now I do have to say when you're lining it up a second time, you do have to make sure you kind of lead it into the right spot because it could easily stamp off kilter. So just lead it into that exact same spot and it's pretty easy to line up in the same place. Even though it's pretty easy to do, I don't think the stamping tool is necessarily meant to keep stamping over exactly in the same spot. So keep that in mind if you're doing really fine detail images, you might only get one try because the rotating part is really the selling point for this. So again, I'm going to rotate it until it reaches that point and then I'll continue stamping this image down to complete my pattern. And last time we'll rotate it into place and stamp it down. Perfect. Next, I'll grab one of the other solid florals from the set and I'm just going to line it up sort of next to that pink floral. And then I'm going to grab a leaf from the set. So I think I'll do this one right here. And we're just going to line this up sort of on the opposite side coming out from that pink flower. And then again, to pick these up, we'll line it in there and press it down. And before we go in and do our stamping, I think the reason why it didn't stamp perfectly the first time is because we sort of have to prime these stamps since they're new. So to prime it, I just go in with my finger and rub a little bit of that oil on there and it sort of gets the stamps ready to take the ink and remove some of the chemicals that they might have on them from manufacturing. Then I can go in with two different colors. So here I'm using a little bit of Slippery Wet 
And then I'm going to go in using some Viper and I'm just going to ink up both images separately and then we can stamp them right down. Give it some good pressure. And yeah, you can see they stamp a lot better. So make sure to prime your stamps before stamping, especially if they're new. And then again, I'll rotate to that fourth spot again so we can do the next layer of stamping. And doing two images at once is a really big time saver like this. So once you've started the pattern, then you can line up two images to make it go a little bit faster. So again, we'll line it up and stamp these guys down. Rotate again, and again, I love this mechanism for rotation. I've never seen something like this. It's super innovative, and those magnets are really strong. Perfect, and I love that they include these little sprigs too. So I'm just going to fill it in with some of the smaller greenery images to sort of finish it off. And then again, make sure to prime these before stamping and you'll get a much better stamped impression. And when it comes to stamping these leaves, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of fake plant, which is a darker green that leans on the more cool side. And I like to use different shades of green because there's lots of different greens and leaves in nature. And so it really gives it kind of a natural look. All right, again, I'll turn it and then we'll stamp it down. And I find that with that turning mechanism with all the measurements on it, it makes it easy to know when to stop and where to go with the turning mechanism. So I like how well they have it labeled. And last turn, perfect. Once we're done stamping, all we need to do is take off that plate remove this magnetic piece at the bottom, and there we have our beautifully stamped wreath. And also I wanted to make a note, the magnet didn't ruin anything, there's no sort of shiny marks or scratches or indents down there, but I love how strong those magnets are. It really makes this turning mechanism work so wonderfully, and you can create such a beautiful wreath. And I gotta be honest too, this stamp set is super helpful because those small images make it really easy to build. They're great for designs like this. So again, I'll have this link down below because this very much so came in handy for this. To finish this up with a sentiment, I'm gonna use the Friendship Floral stamp set. And I love the sentiment that says life is better with a friend like you. So I'll ink this up with a little bit of Versa Pine and Clear Nocturne and stamp it down, giving it some good pressure to make sure that everything transfers. And check that out. So just adding a sentiment like that finishes this off. It's really simple to create, but that wreath is so bold and stunning and really creates a nice focal point on the card. One more thing, I wanna test if you can use this with more of a card base size. So I've cut this down to four by five and one fourth inches. So we'll line this up right in there with one of the corners. And then again, we'll take the magnet at zero and place it down. And I also think it's important to test it out with red rubber stamps. So I'm gonna go in here and use this small stamp from the Kaleidoscope Flowers set. I love this one and it has little pieces that peel apart like this. So we'll line this up and then we can pick it up. And yes, it works great with red rubber. Of course, there's not as much leeway when you push it down, but it's not resting on the cardstock, which is great. So let's go in here and do some different rainbow colors of inks, starting off with Prom Queen. Place this down, and again, yeah, you've got a little bit of leeway there to stamp down with the rubber. All right, we'll rotate this twice, and then we can stamp again using a little bit of bee sting and stamp it down two more times, and then stamp it down. And so this is a great test, not only on if you can use a rectangle of cardstock, but also because I love using red rubber. So this is awesome news because red rubber stamps stamp so beautifully. So I'll just keep stamping and turning. And I'm absolutely loving how beautiful this rainbow geometric pattern is coming along. These kaleidoscope flowers are just so much fun for pattern building. Rotate it twice, and then lastly, this warmer purple to finish it off. So this test was really great. We've created a beautiful design, and we've confirmed that you can both use a rectangle of cardstock for a card front, which is awesome, and then you've got room down here for a sort of sentiment, so you don't always need to make square cards in order to use this tool. And we figured that we can use red rubber stamps, which makes this even more versatile. And before we move on, let's talk about my thoughts on this. This stamping tool is not gonna replace the Misty. It's not gonna even replace the stamp wheel because one thing I love about the stamp wheel is it's got a ton of surface area. So you could just use it like a regular stamping platform. And you could use things like the Concord and Ninth Turnabouts in it, whereas this, you couldn't use those. This isn't necessarily a stamping tool that's meant to stamp over the same spot or do lots of different techniques. It's really meant for that rotating. And for that, this, is an A+. Plus. It's phenomenal. I think this rotating mechanism was so well thought out and super innovative, and I think one of my favorite parts is that it's a small footprint, but yet it still fits 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock, so this is gonna be great for larger home decor makers and scrapbookers as well.
Moving on into the next tool, let's talk about Picket Fence Studios Paper Pouncers. Now I've heard lots of talk about these recently, so I wanted to test them out. And I know there's a product similar made by another company in Canada. I don't have those on hand to compare with these, but if you live in Canada, I'll have those linked down below as well, because I know the shipping might be a little bit faster and cheaper for you guys over there. So these come in a pack of nine rainbow colors, and they each have their own little plastic carrying case, which is the same color as the handle. And this is a really dense sort of, almost makeup feeling sponge, definitely more dense than any other blending sponge that I felt before, so I'm excited to test these out for blending. Now I wanna let you in on some behind the scenes of manufacturing as well. When a craft company has an item like this from the makeup industry, they can actually go to that same manufacturer but request several different things, like maybe a denser sponge, maybe they put it in here a little bit more firm so that it's better for blending. So that's why you might see a little bit of a difference in price, but I'm not telling you to not go buy makeup sponges. You can find something pretty similar in the makeup industry on sites like Amazon, so check out both and see what you like better. I don't see these these tools replacing my domed foam blending tools anytime soon. I love the density of these and the handle. They're really comfortable to hold, but I can see these being helpful in areas where you have really intricate die cuts. I've been thinking about this one, which is my new zigzag chevron die from Spellbinders, because there's a lot of little areas here where on other tools, this would totally get snagged and not be able to blend. So we're gonna test this out on here. I'm going to bring in some mint tape to hold it down onto my surface. Tape that down. And before we get straight into blending, let me share another tool. Now this one is from a small business called the Ink Stand, and these ones were specially made to hold the archival Ranger inks or your Simon Hurley Create ink pads. They've got rubberized feet on the bottom to hold them in place on your desk or crafting surface so they don't move around. And then you're able to go in with your ink pad like this, place the lid in one side and your ink pad in the other. Or you can have your ink pad lid sort of sitting off to the side. You can take a second Simon Hurley Create ink, place it in the top, have that next to the side, and then you can just have one of these for two colors. So I'll go in with my paper pouncer. So what makes this really nice is then it's not moving around as you're inking it up. It's staying perfectly in place. Now my ink pads are felt, and I've really only seen this using foam ink pads, so I'm excited to see how this works. So I'm tapping it right into here to get the foam nice and saturated, and then I'll go right onto my surface and start tapping this down. All right, so we kind of start off with a soft color there. I'm gonna go right back into our sponge, giving it some good pressure because the more pressure you really apply with my ink, the more ink you're gonna get out of the surface and really get this nice and saturated. Because usually sponges like this work a little bit better when they're more saturated with ink. And there, when we have more ink, you definitely see more of a solid color going on the surface there. And I'm going to sort of do one side really dark and then kind of fade this out and see how it fades. So with this tapping, if you go lighter, you can definitely fade out that ink to white and it does it pretty seamlessly. And I wanted to show this kind of real time too because I've seen people use these sped up, but I want you to see how much ink they apply in a certain amount of time. So I like these little lids too because it holds them and keeping ink from getting onto your desk. Then I'm going to ink up the pink handle with a little bit of prom queen. So I like that you have each one of these handles for each different color family of ink that you're using. And then go in and blend this pink together with the red. And these colors are similar, so they're going to blend really seamlessly. But when we get into the orange, that's where it's gonna get interesting to see how it blends with the other colors. And then to get these out of here, I just place the lid back on and it lifts them out really quite easily. All right, next I'm gonna bring in Guppy, which is our orange. And I'll also bring in Shooting Star, which is our nice bright yellow color. And then going in with the orange handle and again, inking these up. So get it nice and saturated with your ink on the surface there. Once you get it nice and loaded, then we can go in on the surface and start our pouncing. All right, and this is what I was really excited to see, sort of how it blends in with that pink. So I'm kind of going up into that pink color to blend them together, and then I'll fade it down. And it looks pretty seamless where we blend that out, and I think it's because with this tapping motion, you don't really get any harsh lines on the surface, so it blends quite seamlessly from one color into the next. I like that a lot. And then again, on this side, I'll sort of fade that out into the white. And last but not least, we'll go in with the yellow sponge, ink this up. So apply quite a bit of ink down onto here, and then we'll tap it right down onto the surface. Beautiful, that color goes on really nicely. So like I said, I was excited to test it out with the felt ink pad to see how it did. But I saw lots of foam ink pad demos, but not many with felt. And it still picks up quite a bit of ink and gives a nice coverage, which I'm excited about. 
All right, and then I'll lift up my ink and put this right away. So when it comes to these ink stands, I think they're a really cool idea. I like them because especially when you go back and forth with your blending tool, this can then be sort of a one-handed motion. You won't have to hold on to your ink pad for dear life to make sure it doesn't go flying. So if you have that problem, I definitely think these are a cool idea. And I like that you can do two ink pads at once or one ink pad and a lid if you want to, and maybe get one or two of these and you're set to go. All right, now let's see how these paper pouncers did. So you can see that color is really nice and smooth. There's no harsh marks. So I'm definitely impressed by the blending that it did and how seamlessly it blended out into the white cardstock. Now it is this sort of foamy material and I find with sponges and things like that, you don't get necessarily as sharp of edges. So these aren't super crisp. Whereas like a blending brush in here would make it a lot more crisp. But that being said, a blending brush couldn't get into here because of how detailed those areas were. So really the only thing for this job that would work is a sponge or a paper pounds so where you can go up and down instead of that side to side motion like this. And as a bonus, this die cut that we use to stencil through can definitely be used on a card because of the beautiful coloring that we added to it. Now before we bite off that it totally can't blend, I just want to try it out one time to make sure that I'm not wrong. So when we go in here and blend on our surface, yeah. You're really not gonna get much blending in there. It kind of flaps around quite a bit. If you wanna get more of a blended effect, you really have to sort of hold onto the sponge down here, get your fingers kind of inky, and then go in and blend it out. So it's not horrible if you're holding it like this, but I don't know who really wants to do that. And that's really why I said it's not gonna replace these anytime soon, because you can really go in here, get a super nice blend, really quickly and easily without having to hold anything and get your fingers inky. But look, this loading up your ink is a one hand job with those ink stands. So I really do like how easy that makes it. They make pretty good maracas. So let's share my thoughts on the paper pouncers. I think these are a good tool for what they're named and what they can do. So pouncing through stencils or coloring die cuts that are super intricate that you usually wouldn't be able to do with blending tools, this is really great for. Do I think it's gonna replace my everyday blending tools? Definitely not, but there's a different tool for a different job. So if you do a lot of that and you love sort of really intricate die cuts and coloring them in, this might be a great tool for you to have. I think a fun way to finish up this card is gonna be using the Zesty stamp set. I love this one. The large lemon branch is gonna be a nice focal point, but there's also tons of other lemon images and sentiments to go along with it. And I'll put this onto my large acrylic block. And then to staple it onto the card, I'm gonna use a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. This is a really great crisp jet black ink, and it's gonna give us a nice detailed stamped image. And then we can stamp it down, giving it some good pressure. And lift it off. Then I'm gonna go in using a little bit of clear heat embossing powder. Because this ink takes a little bit longer to dry, the heat embossing powder is going to set it into place so we can keep moving. And it'll also give it a nice shine. So then I'll heat set this until it's nice and shiny. And check out the shine that adds and it really intensifies the black stamped image, which is beautiful. To color this in, I'm gonna use the Lemon Branch layering stencil. This is a two-piece layering stencil, which you can either use by itself or along with the stamp because it coordinates perfectly. So I'm gonna start off with the Lemon Branch one stencil. It's etched in the corner and if you can read that, you know it's the right way up. And then I'm going to shift the stencil until it lines up with those lemons. And then I'll use some mint tape to mask off any sections where I don't want them to get inked. Now when we go in and do our blending, I wanna share another tool. These are the mini blending brushes from Altenew. They come in a pack of three and I absolutely love them. They got a nice comfort handle up here and they're nice and short and small so they can get into some detailed areas and do some nice blending and shading. I dedicated one of these brushes to each sort of color family. So again, red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then some neutrals. And I found this little acrylic container, which I'll link down below in case if you're interested in it, to store the blending tools. I think it was supposed to be like a lipstick organizer, but it works really well to store these. So I'm gonna start off by going in using a little bit of Shooting Star. I'm gonna ink this up, and then I'll go right onto the surface and start blending onto my lemons. And as I do this, I'm going to sort of start at the top edge where there's more shading, and then I'm going to fade it down to the bottom where I want it to be a little bit lighter. Next, I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of Guppy, which is this nice light orange color. I'm gonna go and using the orange blending brush and just go up near the top edge to give it a little bit more shading and depth and dimension to the image. One thing I really like about these is how short these are coming out of here. It makes it so you get a lot more control so the bristles aren't kind of flaring out everywhere. You have a lot of control as you're blending. And then we'll lift that off and check that out. You got nice, beautifully shaded lemons. So next I'm gonna go in on the top end of the stencil because it has the lemon branch. So I'll go in and line this up right on top of the branch and then we'll tape it down. 
And here I'm gonna use a little bit of Gur on my mini ink blending brush. And again, I have one for the neutrals, so this is great. And then I'll just go in and easily blend this in. And another thing I like about these small little brushes is you don't necessarily have to mask off a ton of different areas because they're detailed, so you can just make sure to avoid any area where you don't want to get ink. And there we have our branch blended in. Moving into the second stencil, this one says Lemon Branch 3 and Lemon Branch 4 because again, it's two parts on one stencil. So I'm gonna start off with this top part, which is going to cover all of those leaves, line it up, and then I'll use some tape to hold it down. And then with these leaves, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of later gator and another little blending brush and just go in and blend them out. Now, when I do this again, I wanna start at one side of the leaves to make it a little bit darker and then fade out to the lighter side. It just gives it a nice naturally shaded effect, which I really like. It adds some nice depth and dimension to the images. And then I can lift this section off and we got those shaded in. And then if you wanna add even more depth and dimension, you're gonna to go to the bottom of these leaves and it lines up halfway on some of these leaves to add depth to those areas. So to do this, I'm gonna use a little bit of fake plant to make it quite a bit darker. Again, going in using the same green blending brush and then I'll go on top and darken this side of the leaves, which is just gonna add a nice shading and dimension to them. And when we lift that off, check it out. They're nicely shaded in and it gives it a great 3D look. And then I'm going to quickly and easily fussy cut this image out using the Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. And I'm just leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around the image. Leaving that little bit of a white border helps to not have to go into all of the little tiny details of the image and makes it a little bit easier to cut out smoothly. And I'm using my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. I'm gonna add this to the tools list today even though you guys have probably seen it if you've seen my videos before. But I love that they spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired. And also I find that it gives you a smoother line because you're not stopping to do that step of opening up the scissors, they just open back out at you and you can continue along on your smooth line. So these have been absolutely game changing. If you struggle with fussy cutting, I recommend checking them out. And then I'll pop this up on some foam tape onto my blended background. And I love all these different sentiments you can use on the card. I like to test it out from the clear sheet. And I think I'm gonna use the sentiment that says you're my main squeeze. That one's a lot of fun and it fits perfect right in that area. So I'll ink it up in that first applied nocturne and then I'll stamp it down, giving it some good pressure to make sure that it transfers. And then I'm gonna add this to a top folding stark white card base. So I'll start up in the top corner, line it up with the top edge, and then it should line up with the rest of the card. And there's a closer look at that finished card. I love that blended and faded background, those beautiful, vibrant colors used in the paper punters, and then finishing it off with that gorgeous lemon branch. I love all the blending and shading and how easy it was to color them in using the stencil and stamp set. It just looks so realistic with tons of dimension when it's shaded in beautifully like that. All right, friends, those are a look at some new crafting tools and my thoughts on them. I'll have everything linked down below in case if you're interested in any one of them. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave me your thoughts down below in the comment section. I always love chatting with you guys down there. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.